To the bottom of the six we go. Noah Milliken back out to the mound for Penn. The Quakers on top, seven to two. Cordell will have eight, nine, and one due up. Luke Johnson, Jacoby Davis, and John Quinlan. NCAA tournament bid on the line here in the Ivy League tournament championship game. I'm just talking about the Penn recruiting strategy that's been effective. They've been aggressive. They recruit locally. And, and John Yurkow, who Drew mentioned earlier, is a local guy, Jersey native. He likes the makeup of Northeast guys. What they do like a lot of Ivy teams, they recruit athletes. They recruit a lot of shortstops. And then they can play elsewhere in the field. So while Davis Baker, and we saw his ability there a couple innings ago, what he can do in the field getting to a ball. If you can play shortstop, you can play anywhere in the field. And it's something Columbia does a lot. They recruit those athletes who can play the middle of the field and just inserts them in other spots across the diamond. First pitch to Johnson misses 1-0. And obviously, Columbia and Penn have been very effective with that strategy, recruiting athletes and then coaching them up in the weight room. In the turf to Johnson, 2-0. Cornell, meanwhile, has been on the rise. Coming off seven straight sub-500 Ivy seasons. This one's lined in a left center field. Taylor over to cut it off, a leadoff single for Luke Johnson here in the sixth. So Cornell, who got the leadoff man on quite a bit in the first game, Gets the leadoff man on for only the second time today and the first time since the first inning when John Quinlan got aboard. And now it's Jacoby Davis who walked and scored his last time up. Milliken deals, and that's down low. 1-0. Cornell the three seed, Penn the four seed. Columbia the one seed was the first eliminated. Prince in the two seed next, and could it be Cornell the three seed? It was the last team to be eliminated. 1 0 in for a strike, 1 and 1. In a tournament like this, the, your seeding doesn't matter a whole lot. It's nice to be the one seed so you can host, but whether you're the two seed or the three seed, it doesn't really matter. You know, if it all lines up, you've got your ace on game number one, and you have yourself your best shot, and then you want to just keep winning from there. 1 1, and this is Rope. Down the right field line, it drops. Cut off around the track by Brown. Johnson to third. Jacoby Davis with a double. And Cornell has its first two on in the last of the sixth. And they have their first two on as the eight and nine hitters. And now you've got Quinlan, Watt, Jensen, Quatroni all coming up. This is, this is your opportunity if you're the Big Red. You need not just one run here. You need a minimum of two to call this inning a success from what we've seen so far. Second and third, nobody out. Top of the lineup, down five. Need multiple runs here. Need that crooked number for the first time in this game. Penn has only needed two pitchers to this point. Maybe not something we were expecting, but Marty Coyne followed by Noah Milliken. So far they've held the big red to two, but Cornell threatens with nobody out in the sixth. Now John Quinlan. And the leadoff man fouls it off his foot. Milliken's pitch high is 52, second highest is 39 on his season. And that was just his 36th, so he's pretty much in that territory and certainly will be after the next three, four batters if he's still in there that long. Quinlan drove an RBI double the opposite way his last time up. A one, in for a strike, going two. Milliken already with three strikeouts to this point. And he deals an 0-2, and he blew it by Quinlan for his fourth strikeout. And this comes in a big spot. Keeps the runners on second and third, and now one out. 
Massive, massive strikeout getting Quinlan, who entered the day with the 29th best batting average in all of college baseball at 391. Does have two hits in this game, but strikeout there. If you watch this tournament, you can see how much of an asset it is to have that high fastball. This is grounded by Hensler and down the left field line. That'll score a pair. Luke Johnson and Jacoby Davis are home. Diving into second with a two-run double is Nathan Waugh. And Cornell is within three. It's seven of four. Waugh didn't crush it, but he, he hit it hard enough to get it by a, da a diving Hensler. And it, it slowed up there down the left field line. Easy to score two runs with Johnson and Davis touching. And, and now just one more man on. Base and you've got the tying run to the plate. Big, big production there for Cornell. And Penn is going to have a conference on the mound. Again, Cornell erased a 6-1 deficit in the seventh inning yesterday. Erased a 6-0 deficit in the first game today. Both against these Quakers. Cornell is playing its third straight game against Penn. That was, that was quite the pitching coach, Waugh. I'm not <laughs> sure who we're seeing it. Josh Schwartz was, was really moving slowly. I don't think I've ever seen a slower walk out to the mound. And hey, it was a quick conversation, though, so it evens out. By comparison, your walk earlier today from home plate to the backstop <laughs> was a sprint. <laughs> yeah, stepped it off. Right, there he goes. There, I think he realized it, too. <laughs> I think somebody said something to the crowd. <laughs> well, Penn probably stalling for some time here. I don't see any throwing in the Penn bullpen though. Again, we see about the middle third of the bullpen in terms of mound to catcher. Oh, actually just saw a ball go back. So there's some throwing starting. So Max Jensen who's 0 for 3. He takes one right over from Milliken, 0 and 1. Sun just about to disappear in the distance. The entire field here is it's clad in shadows now, so none of that shade to shadow or reverse in terms of mound and batter's area. A one, blew it by him 0 and two. Well, we see Milliken can get it up there. He's facing a guy in Jensen who hit 402 in Ivy play. That's third in the Ivy League, and if you've following, been following along today, you know that number one, Wyatt Hensler, number two, John Quinlan, and number three, another Cornell guy in Max Jensen. Went eight for 14 in his final series of the regular season. And he hammers this one deep in the right. Brown back onto the track at the wall. Goodbye. A two run homer for Max Jensen. And Cornell is within a run. A four run sixth. And Penn's lead is cut to seven to six. Well, I know this is a March term. But we've got Ivy Madness here. Cornell with yet another comeback against Penn. And this one just snuck over that fence in right center. In the wheelhouse of the left-hander. And now the umpires are yeah, the, having a discussion. The Penn bench was asking for something. I didn't see an appeal to a base, maybe perhaps a missed base of some kind. Maybe the celebration of the offense there and Oh man. You can see carry the bat all the way to first base. We actually touch first base with the bat. Not quite sure if anything came of that. Considering the Cornell dugout is applauding, probably not. It's a two run homer in a one run game. And now the Ivy League Rookie of the Year steps in Mark Quatrani. Hold it a very long time there. That was that was unusual. And they are certainly trying to, to limit the celebrations. 
First pitch breaking ball in for a strike from Milliken. I mean, this is the biggest game of yeah, the year. Yeah, you can. That's a, one of the biggest home runs you'll ever hit. 100%. I mean, it's an emotional game. That, and we'll just stop there. Quattroni rips it in a left. And all of a sudden, the big rat are raking. Five hits among the first six Cornell batters in the sixth. Well, we said it just a few minutes ago. It, it can happen so, so quickly with this Cornell team, and that's precisely what's happened. And, and that's going to force the hand of Penn. I think we're going to get a change here. Mark Quattrani, the Ivy League Rookie of the Year, has a trio of hits in each game today. That's after he hit the game-winning Grand Slam yesterday and a big three-run homer in the first game on Friday. And that's going to do it for Noah Milliken. Penn makes a pitching change and what's all of a sudden a one-run game here in the sixth.